Uh, thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. I think this bill is an absolute train wreck. An absolute train wreck. And I ask those listening to this debate, I ask you this question. Do you believe if there's a business in this country that can't find private shareholders and investors who are prepared to put their money into it, and also that business cannot find a, a lender, a bank, someone who provides debt finance, that business can't find anyone who's prepared to lend it money, do you think your taxpayer dollars, which you work hard for, should be spent by the government to invest in that business? Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think that's sustainable? If these businesses can't find equity, capital being contributed by the private sector, if they can't find banks prepared to lend to them, why should your taxpayer dollars go into financing those businesses? Why? This is what I believe. Order, Senator Scar. Uh, Senator Chisholm. I just ask that the senator direct his comments through the chair. Thank you, Senator Chisholm. Senator Scar, please remember to direct your comments through the chair. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I always get excited when there are people in the gallery. Uh, and uh, when I'm here, uh, I do like to make sure that uh, we include them in the proceedings, but um, I'll do my best to uh, adhere to Senator Chisholm's rebuke. Uh, in, this, in this respect, this is an extraordinarily important point. This is an extraordinarily important point. I believe that the government should focus on its core responsibilities. That is creating, firstly, an investment environment in which people in the private sector, capital in the private sector, comes to this country uh, from overseas and is also generated within the borders of our country, and the private sector makes investments of, in the businesses of the type we're talking about. And then the government should use taxpayer dollars to actually provide the roads, the hospitals, the schools and all the other government services needed which provide an environment whereby businesses can actually be established and provide wealth and prosperity across the whole country. That's my belief. I do not believe that taxpayer dollars should be used as some sort of government process to pick winners. And I'll tell you why. History tells us Governments, and this might come as a great surprise to those listening to this debate, government doesn't have a really good track record in terms of picking investors, picking winners amongst commercial enterprises. The government finds it hard enough to keep its own infrastructure projects within budget and on time. Why would you possibly trust the government to decide whether or not it should invest in a private enterprise or not? Why would you possibly trust the government to do that? I had 25 years in the private sector before coming to this place. One of my jobs as a senior executive in a mining company was to travel the world and look for investment opportunities. And I can tell you, I can tell you the biggest way to destroy shareholder value is to make an investment which was the wrong investment, make an acquisition of an asset which was the wrong acquisition. And I've seen billions of dollars of private sector money which has been lost through those sorts of investment mistakes. So given that environment, why would you possibly support a policy whereby the government is going to use taxpayers' dollars and all the government money is taxpayers' dollars and go out and try and pick investment winners, effectively play the share market? Why would you possibly support such a policy. And let me tell you this. The other, issue, the other issue with this policy is what happens once the government puts its foot on the sticky paper? What happens when the government makes that initial $100 million investment into an enterprise, becomes a shareholder in an enterprise? It's put its foot on the sticky paper. What happens if the economy turns, the market turns against that individual enterprise and that enterprise says, well, we're going into liquidation unless we have another $100 million. 
What does the government do then? Does it write off the investment and walk away? Ah, that's hard. That's political because the government has got its foot on the sticky paper. And if the government withdraws any future investment, then it's going to be heavily criticised. It will be criticised first for making the wrong investment. It will be criticised because the employees and the unions rightly will beseech the government to provide additional support. It will be criticised because it's not supporting the manufacturing industry. And all the arguments we've heard that have been used in the context of the automotive argument will once again be used. It will be deja vu. And the government will then be trapped to continue to use your taxpayer dollars, the taxpayer dollars of the people in the gallery, the people listening to the debate, the people who don't even know we're having this debate about their money, about their taxpayer dollars. The government will be trapped to continue to provide additional support to those businesses. And that is the fundamental risk, the fundamental risk of government sponsoring business, businesses that can't attract the equity and, and debt themselves because private investors don't want to invest in them. That's why they need to go cap in hand to the government. And that's the fundamental risk that those businesses which are unable to raise that equity and debt in the private markets are coming to government because they can't otherwise raise it. And then they become dependent on the public support. And then the government gets trapped because it's got its foot on the sticky paper. And it knows if it cuts them loose, then it's going to be heavily criticised. And so then the government starts to make irrational economic decisions with taxpayer money. With taxpayer money. And we've seen it before. We have seen it before. What the government needs to focus on is productivity, energy costs, our regulatory system, and providing the environment, the environment for businesses to prosper. If all of these businesses that the government is talking about has this great net comparative advantage, why can't they raise money from the private sector? Why do they need to go to the government? They can't answer that question. And the answer to that question is because they don't have robust enough projects. If you've got a project that's going to be profitable and the risks can be mitigated, you'll be able to raise the money. But if you don't, you go to government. And they're proposing, the government, the Labor government is proposing to use billions, not millions, billions of dollars of your taxpayer dollars to invest in these projects. Billions of dollars. What could go wrong? What could go right? It's probably a, a less uh, elaborate question. And then consider the opportunity cost. The basic rule of economics, scarcity of resources. The government only has so much in taxpayer dollars. There's only a particular pool of taxpayer dollars. Would you rather your taxpayer dollars go to investing, picking winners, in the private sector and investing in those companies? Or would you rather your taxpayer dollars go to addressing the recommendations which were brought down in the report of the Royal Commission into veteran suicide? I know what my preference is. Would you rather your government go out there and invest in businesses that can't raise money from pri the private sector? Or would you rather your taxpayer dollars go into the NDIS system, helping some of the most vulnerable people in our community, or putting additional funds in the aged care system, or providing for the defence of the country, or doing any of the other things which we talk about in this place. Because this is a choice for every taxpayer dollar. It can only go so many different ways. And what the government is proposing is to invest your taxpayer dollar. And bear in mind, these are borrowed dollars. Because we've got, we've got net debt as a country. We owe hundreds of billions of dollars of debt. So the government, it's even worse. It's even worse. The government is going out and is borrowing these billions of dollars and then investing. It's like going down to your local bank, borrowing from the bank, and then putting the money on the share market. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? And time and time and time again, through Australian economic history, we've seen these 
issues arise and policies such as this end up as absolute public policy debacles, where billions and billions of dollars of taxpayer monies are spent and there's an inevitable conclusion that the business fails and taxpayer dollars, which could have been allocated elsewhere, are wasted. Now, these aren't just observations which I've made. This country has had the benefit of a productivity commission, which has been the outstanding institution in this country, which provides detailed, objective advice with respect to economic matters. And this is what Daniel Wood, Danielle Wood, I should say, the productivity commissioner appointed by the Labor Party, had said, has said in relation to these sorts of schemes. If we are supporting industries that don't have a long-term competitive advantage, that can be an ongoing cost. It diverts resources, that's workers and capital, away from other parts of the economy where they might generate high value uses. So that's the productivity commissioner speaking, appointed by those opposite. We risk creating a class of businesses that is reliant on government subsidies and that can be very effective in coming back for more. And that's the sticky paper phenomenon. Once the government enters in, makes an investment into these businesses, the government's foot is on the sticky paper, trapped. Former Productivity Commissioner Mr Gary Banks described the future made in Australia as a fool's errand that risks repeating mistakes of the past by propping up political favourites. So it's not just picking winners, it's picking political favourites. And that's not a politician in this place speaking, it's the former Productivity Commissioner, Gary Banks talking, one of this country's most well-credentialed economists. A fool's errand. He likened the scheme proposed by the government to Hotel California. You know the song by the Eagles, Hotel California, saying many will enter the program, but few will ever leave. Again, the sticky paper phenomenon. And you know what our Prime Minister said in response to Gary Banks? A Prime Minister who, with all due respect, has spent nearly the whole of his working life in this place not out in the private sector or uh, building businesses, but as a politician. He said Mr Gary Banks was a flat earther. That's how he described Gary Banks, a flat earther. Right? That's like calling Galileo a flat earther. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Gary Banks, a very, very well respected former productivity commissioner of this country, trying to bring to light the mistakes of the past because he considers this bill a fool's errand, which will actually lead to committing exactly the same mistakes. And he gets called a flat earther by the Prime Minister. Why couldn't the Prime Minister of this country actually engage in a sensible debate and explain to the Australian people why we shouldn't be concerned with the risk? that if a company is going cap in hand to the government for funds, why should the taxpayer invest in that company if it can't raise money from the private sector or from, from banks? He doesn't answer the substance of the, of the argument. He doesn't engage in a civil debate with respect to the substance of the argument. He gives the, the good one-liner, oh, Mr Gary Banks, a flat earther. Another eminent economist, Professor Richard Holden, defended Mr Banks, saying the Prime Minister's insult was wrong and uncalled for. Again, not my words. Another economist who led to the defence of Mr Gary Banks. Professor Holden said, the PM says all the wrong things, and his main argument for subsidies is that other countries are doing it, like a primary school kid telling a teacher, but he started it. Another economist, not a politician. This is people who study this area and know the history. Stephen Hamilton, an independent economist, has said, there are many problems with industry policy and this is the big one. It's why I tend to favour more neutral investment incentives like a lower corporate tax rate or accelerated depreciation. I thought we'd learned these lessons, but apparently not. Apparently not. The bad old days are back. So, to those listening to this debate, 
through you, Acting Deputy President, of course, always through you, billions of dollars of taxpayers' dollars are going to be spent on investments as the government goes out there trying to pick winners, playing the stock market and playing political favourites. Good luck.